Hello, folks. I'm Jacob Campbell. Hi. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a beauty, isn't she? Mm. Can I try it on? Oh, I'm afraid it's not for sale. Belonged to my grandmother. Good way to get folks into the shop, though. Especially pretty young ladies, dragging in their fellows. Mm. <laughs> Very clever. Yeah. Oh, there's more gowns over here. Oh, great. Are you a Civil War buff? Uh, a bit, yes. Uh, you mind if I take a look back here? Oh, no, help yourself. I'm a bit of a restorer myself. Ah. I got these in just the other day. Very nice. They're very old. Yes, they are, aren't they? Just belonged to a Union general. Really? Deb, come take a look at this. Great, huh? Mm, it's kind of falling apart. I need a desk. How much will you take for it? Well, I was planning on restoring it myself, but uh, if you really want it, 800? Oh, Ooh. too much. Let's go. Will you take 600? This desk is 19th century. 800 is the best I can do. I can't pay 800. seen you do an impulse buy. I thought you wanted me to be more spontaneous. Next time, be spontaneous over something a little less uh, heavy. You know, you're pretty strong for a girl. It must be from throwing all those manuscripts on the reject it pile. It must be. Look at that. Huh? Mm -hmm. What do you see when I get a little wax and polish on this? A little polish. And... Mm. Thinks I should go. Get out. All right. Sweet dreams. You too.
Dearest, it is after midnight and I am at last free to speak to you. Mother, father and Flossie have grown accustomed to my late night scribbling and have bid me good night. In my 29 years I have been called upon by several gentlemen, but you are the one who occupies my thoughts. Even though you are not real, you are more dear to me than the man who has asked just this night for my hand in marriage. I do not love him. To please father I have tried, and sadly I know I have a duty to obey and must soon accept. But I ache for a love that burns like fire and moonlight. I speak with you in my mind and heart, if you only existed outside of them. Good night, sweetheart. Dream of me. Dear lady, I've just read a letter, a secret compartment of your desk, and I wish there was some way I know you feel an obligation to your father, but you have to obey your heart. It's a mistake to marry someone you don't love. Don't despair. The man of your dreams may be out there in the mist right now, just a heartbeat away. Who knows? Perhaps I'm the one you seek. But unfortunately, my dear, I've already given my heart to Scarlett O'Hara. Yours always, Rhett Butler. See, when are you going to finish? Stop worrying, Lester. It's almost done. The Sigma game is going to kill us at Christmas time. What kind of attitude is that? It'll be ready. <laughs> Better be. Meanwhile, we'll kill him in the bike race. Mm. Or not. You're hovering. Stop hovering. Information. Boston. See now. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, here he is. Picked it up in Willoughby. Where's that? Oh, half an hour north of here, up near Salem. Address number three Mill Plain Road. Big old place outside of town. Six fifty-two. Long two troops. Long two. Oh. Signet Pack has a six fifty flat. I'm happy for them. We're happy for them, aren't we, Cash? Come on. No way. I've had it. No, no, no. Come on. We have less than six weeks till everlasting glory. Coach says one more time.
This is private property. You trespass it. I'm sorry, I don't mean to intrude. I, I just... I... Off of my property now! Actually, I'm just interested in someone who used to live here. I know exactly what you're interested in. And we're not interested. Miss Clarice's not going to no nursing home. And you can tell that to the whole blasted cousin group. But, ma'am. Ma'am. Lesson number two. Please, per favore. Per favore. Thank you. Grazie. Grazie. Uh, you have outdone yourself this time, Our... Mamma Mamma Mia. Before a trip, one should immerse oneself in the culture. Uh, you have certainly done that. Ah, and it's no more Beatrice. I've got everyone calling me Beatrice. Beatrice. May I stick with Mom, please? <laughs> You know, with all the money going into your wedding, you and Devna could take a trip around the world. I want to take a trip around the world. See, that's your problem. You get too stuck, Scotty, trapped in your own little universe. Oh, really? Actually, you are talking to a man who just answered a 134-year-old love letter. Scusi? Yeah, I found it in this antique desk I bought. I dream of you. You speak only in my mind and heart, if only you existed. You memorized it. Yeah, there's something so sad about it. So I just, I answered it. And did you mail it? <laughs> yes, I did. But you know, I don't trust the post office, so I sent it to an express. <laughs> don't get smart. H.G. Wells believed in time travel. And Einstein thought that time was just another dimension. You know, some people believe that souls can travel through time. We travel to silence. Uh -huh. Do you have an address? Oh, see? No, I knew it. I shouldn't have told you. You're going to get carried away now. <laughs> Opening my mail now. Your mail. Uh, this is dated 1863. Took a little time to get here. Where did you get this? In the desk. Secret compartment. You're kidding me. Where? Deb, I just walked in. I don't feel like taking the desk over. Just ask. Okay. Here. Here. Mm -hmm. A little switch back here and... That is so cool. Yeah. Poor thing. Mm -hmm. Born a heart after nobody. Some fantasy guy. And then she stuck up to marry some loser her father picked out for her. Maybe she didn't marry him. We're talking about the 1860s. She married him. I'm gonna go check on dinner. First class postage from Boston to Willoughby in 1863 was one cent. Be careful with that, it wasn't cheap. A bottle of ink. I got the Waterman people to duplicate the formula they used back then. Uh, hold it, hold it. Gotta be perfect or we don't have a prayer of crossing the barrier. Mother, stop, stop. Let's just say I bought into this madness for a few milliseconds, which of course I don't. Where would you suggest that I mail this painstakingly authentic letter? Manhasset Postal Substation on the north side. Built 1857. It's the only pre-Civil War post office in existence. It's open 24 hours for deposit. Go at night. I'm not sure why, but it seems more appropriate. Halt. I really need to know something. Do you think this is going to work? Wouldn't it be awesome if it did? <laughs> Even though you are not real, you are more dear to me than the man who has asked just this night for my hand in marriage. I do not love him. To please father, I have tried. And sadly, I know I have a duty to obey and 
must soon accept. But I ache for a love that burns like fire and moonlight. I speak with you in my mind and heart. If you only existed outside of them. Good night, sweetheart. Dream of me. Dear lady, I've just read the letter in the secret compartment of your desk. Your dreams may be out there in the mist right now, just a heartbeat away. Who knows? Perhaps I'm the one you seek. A friend. Ah, oh, funny farm, here I come. To you, Maggie. Seen your sister? She's in the garden, Papa. Miss Whitcomb? Mr. Regal? I found myself in the vicinity, thought I'd take the liberty of stopping by. How nice. She's quite lovely, isn't she? She's very lovely. Come midnight, she'll be in full bloom. And then come morning, she'll be gone. I'm trying to write a poem about her. I do hope you'll read it to me once it's completed. I find your verses most charming. Thank you. Looks like it'll be a lovely evening. Some household who brings the cards to me. I, I have had some training in this. I, I was wondering, uh, Miss Whitcomb, Lizzie, 
Yes, Mr. Regal. I was wondering if you'd had an opportunity to consider the, the suggestion I made to you during our previous visit. Oh, yes, well, I'm, I'm still considering it. Glad to hear that. <laughs> Look up. Look up. One of my headaches coming on, so I'm going to say good night. Father, mother, floss. Oh, Lizzie. I forgot. There's a letter for you. Thank you, mother. I do feel better, dear. Yes, Father. Your mother and I wonder if there's anything you wish to tell us. No, Father. I spoke at some length earlier with Everett Regal. He's given me to believe that the two of you have come to an understanding. I have only agreed to what you might call a prelude to an understanding. I see. And might this prelude lead eventually to an actual understanding mm -hmm. and an engagement and to a marriage? Father, I don't love him. You're 29 years old, Lizzie. Father, I know you want what you think is best for me. And I know what's expected of me. It's not merely our expectations. It's common sense. A woman of your years, uh, however comfortable her situation, may scarcely afford to, to be reluctant when a suitable match presents himself. <laughs> Headache? Yes, Father. Is there anything I can do? No, I just... I think I just need some sleep.
Sir, I received your astonishing letter today and am amazed by your audacity. Who are you? And how could you know there was something in my secret place to be stolen? I wonder as I place this second letter in the same place as the first, am I in the toils of some feverish dream? Or will you violate my privacy again? In mystification, Elizabeth Whitcomb. Dear Elizabeth, I'm sure you'll find this as impossible to believe as I do. My name is Scott Corrigan. I live in Boston, but not the Boston you know. A Boston as I write these words at my desk, or rather your desk, because I now own the desk that sits in your bedroom. I try to imagine how all of this could have happened. The only explanation I can come up with is that for some reason the connection between us is so strong that we're able to talk to each other across the chasm of time. If I haven't utterly terrified you, please sit at our desk and write again soon. Yours, Scott Corrigan. Lizzie? Good heavens, what's the matter? Nothing. Um, you startled me. I was somewhere else. Because of something in the letter? What letter? The letter that you're trying to hide from me. Oh, <laughs> that letter. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Um, it's just another rejection from a publisher. Oh, Lizzie, I'm sorry. Your verses are transcendental. Mm. <laughs> Only Mr. Ralph Waldo Emerson of the New England Literary Journal felt the same way. I still don't understand why you won't submit them to Mr. Regal for his magazine. I have submitted them to Mr. Regal. I'm still awaiting a response. I'm sure someone will print your verses. You just have to be patient. Dear Mr. Corrigan, I have decided to accept that the laws of nature, as they apply to you and me, have been, for whatever reason, temporarily suspended. No, it is. <laughs> okay, that was easy. How about flatware? Yes, yes, flatware. You have the advantage over me in that you know my deepest secrets. Well, I know none of yours. Tell me who you are and how you live in your time so many years in the future. How about this? That's uh, too sci-fi. Most important of all, tell me whether this conjunction between us, which I confess I feel as strongly as you, means that you too yearn for a deep and passionate love. How about this? Or is there already someone you love? Right soon, before the laws of nature reassert themselves. Maybe we should just see with our hands. No, no, no. no. Uh, sorry. I... Dear Lizzie, you have asked some crucial questions. Have I? Mom? Have I added the nutmeg? The nutmeg? In a pound cake? What a peculiar recipe. Cinnamon. 
I meant, um, have I added the cinnamon? Do I yearn for love? Yes, of course. Am I in love now? I'm engaged to be married, and yes, I believe I'm in love. Believe? What, Mom? I believe this is going to be a, a delicious cake. Don't you, Maggie? If you'll excuse me, Mom, I'll sit with Justin now. A friend once said that when you're in love, you light up like a Christmas tree when your lover enters the room. I don't think I've ever felt that way. At least, not until last night, when I found your second letter. And how many does this make? Three. Counting the first one. And you're sure nobody is... Playing some kind of bizarre joke? Impossible. No, this is impossible. Mother, you're the one who talked me into this insanity in the first place. But I never dreamed... What in the world does Deborah think about all this? I didn't tell her. You didn't tell her? It's incredible, isn't it? I'll tell you what's incredible. My son, who is engaged to be married, is having an affair with a woman who's been dead for over a hundred years. Mom, we write letters. Love letters that you keep secret from your fiancé. And what about Elizabeth Whitcomb? Scotty, you don't have the right to get mixed up in a life that's already been lived. If she doesn't love the guy, she shouldn't marry him. Here she go. Rome awaits you. I can't believe we're having this conversation. This woman doesn't exist. Then who wrote this? In this world, in the world you and I live in, she does not exist. Then why do I feel the way I feel? And what way is that? My dear Lizzie, I can't begin to tell you how wonderful I feel as I read your letters. I only wish I could hold you in my arms. gone by and still no letter. Are you worried that since you told me of your engagement, I will think you a scoundrel for professing tender feelings for me? I'm worried about those tender feelings in the first place. I'm not so innocent as you might think, Mr. Corrigan. I have danced the waltz with many men, and I'm an avid reader of the modern novel. So I am au courant on the subject of forbidden passion. I'm afraid this waltz is going to have to be mine endeavors, Miss Whitcomb. The hard truth is, we are doomed to be chased. To never touch each other, hear each other, see each other. So what harm can there be to write to each other? If you are still there, write to me quickly. And tell me what it means to light up like a Christmas tree. Sorry to bother you. I'm just trying to find out about the Whitcombs. Why? 
Uh, well, um, I bought a desk that used to belong to one of them. I just became interested in the family. Thought I'd write a book about them. A book? They're just regular folk. You know who they were? <laughs> Clarice's grandma was a Whitcomb. Clarice? The lady I take care of. You mean there's a, there's a Whitcomb living in here right now? That's right. I've had 50 years of her temper, and believe me, it's worse than mine. <laughs> um, I, I would really love to talk to her. Would that be possible? She's sleeping. I, I know this is an intrusion. Would, would you mind if I just took a peek inside and just... Why would I let you do that? I'll paint the house. This side, anyway. If you turn out to be one of them no good lawyers for Clarice's no good cousins, I take a rolling pin to you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, mister, you've had your peek. Just a minute, please. May, who is that you're talking to down there? Now you've done it. Clarice? Who are you? This fellow's writing a book about the Whitcombs. He wanted to meet you. How do you do, ma'am? My name is Scott. You're a fool, May. He's a lawyer. No, no, ma'am. I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I... I told a whole lot of you I am not leaving this house. Till the good Lord takes me. I'm just trying to find out some information about Elizabeth Whitcomb. Bunch of liars, all of you. Get out. I warned you. How do you know about Lizzie? I found a letter that she wrote in an old desk. Probably from here. Grandma Flossie told me stories about my Aunt Elizabeth. She was very beautiful. I never knew her. Can you tell me if she was ever married? I need to sleep now. I need to know if she was ever married. Ma'am? Dear Lizzie, Ben Franklin named it electricity, and we now use it to power machines, light our homes, and our Christmas trees. Good morning, Miss Lizzie. Thank you. To light up like a Christmas tree, 
means to glow with pleasure, and I am glowing, right now. I went to your house on Mill Plain Road. Yes, it's still there. A very old woman, your sister Flossie's granddaughter, lives in it, and I actually stood in your bedroom. But what I will never forget is how I suddenly felt your presence on the stairs, almost as if you touched my cheek. It's crazy, but I felt as if I could touch you too. Lizzie, to ignore what's happened would be to deny a miracle. Forgive my silence. It won't happen again, I promise. All my love, Scotty. Darling Scotty, I beg you, please keep your promise. Never stop writing again, or I fear I shall stop breathing. As my breath stops now at the thought of you in my house, in this very room, amazing as it seems, I felt it too, in the very same place on the stairs. A touch like a sweet promise. I know that we are tempting fate. And in reality, there is your time and my time. But we shall live and love across time. Deal. I dream of you, but I can't see your face. Please, send me a picture. Remember, you have to be still. Don't move. I want you to look as if you were about to walk into my arms. Hello? Hey. Hey. How are you? I'm good. Good. How are you? Oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> you look so happy. Oh, what happened? Oh, you're here. Oh. You're here. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> What's so, that? Uh, that is Elizabeth Whitcomb. The one who wrote the letter? Yeah. Well, where'd you get it? Actually, I got it from someone who lives in her old house. You went to her house? No. <laughs> Why? I'm just curious. Well, how, how'd you even find it? I got some info from that antique guy. I stopped by on my way back from practice. It's in Wilby. Huh. Yeah. Mm. Well, I guess I should be grateful that um, the other woman's the dead one. Well, this parcel of land is for sale. I know you love nature, Lizzie. I mean, that is uppermost in my mind as I survey the region for a possible future home together. I appreciate that. I was wondering, Mr. Eagle, mm -hmm. if you'd had a chance to peruse the verses I gave you a month ago. Oh, yes, yes. I've read them, yes. Well? They're very interesting. Very passionate. Perhaps not quite as attentive as they might be to the mechanics of the art. The odd meters. Broken rhymes. You have aptitude. You need guidance. I hope in future you will allow me to provide it in all things. I have decided to cease writing poetry. I know his regal highness is too conventional to take me seriously until my work has been validated by others. But the truth is, my darling, there are no others. I sing, but nobody listens except you. So I offer you the last poem I shall ever write. So, uh, you and Deb doing the marriage thing, huh? Yeah. Yes, we're uh, doing the marriage thing. It's a great book. Thanks. Listen, Dan, can, can I ask you a favor? Do you mind? Sure. Would you mind, uh, sorry, would you mind taking a look at a poem and telling me what you think of it? You want me to evaluate your poem right here, right now? It's not mine, it's a, it's a friend. It's short. You mind? All right. Thank you. It's 
uh, just fun. <laughs> Stranger, not on this earth shall we meet. Thou surely I have lived a life with you. I would wed eternity. Tell him not to give up his day job. What's the matter with it? Besides being old-fashioned, sentimental, and derivative? You mean as opposed to the pretentious drivel that gets published these days? What is your problem? I didn't have one until about ten seconds ago. Oh, really? And what yeah. would that be? Uh, you? Second, please. Really? Yeah. Well, I seem to be... What's going on? I insulted uh, his friends. Poetry. What, what, what's he talking about? What friend? Nothing. Nobody. Well, it had to be somebody if you almost came to blows over it. It's uh, Elizabeth Whitcombs. I, I found it in uh, another drawer in the desk. I just thought it might have some historical significance. Mm. Well, it has significance, all right. Deborah. What's going on, Scotty? Nothing. Nothing's going on. <laughs> First, you don't tell me about finding her letter. And then you go tracking down Elizabeth Whitcomb's house. And you don't tell me about that either. And then you don't tell me about getting her a picture or about finding her poem. Honey, you're blowing this out of No, the don't. Course. You're putting more energy into Elizabeth Whitcomb than you are into our That's wedding plans. That's not true. I want to know why. I mean, are you that freaked out about getting married? Is that what this is? I don't know what you're talking because about. Because if I... you don't want to do this, Scotty, you just say the word. I don't Be honest and tell me. I do. Because we'll call it off. No, I do. I don't want to call it. My fault, it means nothing, okay? Dear Lizzie, please don't stop writing your poetry. First of all, this regal guy sounds like he wouldn't know a good poem if it smacked him in the face. You say you sing, but nobody listens? Maybe that's true for now, but what about in 10 years, in 100 years? You once said we were doomed never to touch each other. But you did touch me with your words. Keep singing, my love. I'll always be here to listen. Oh, Floss, there's nothing to worry about. Then wh why do you have to go all the way to Boston? The doctor thinks my headaches may have something to do with my eyes. And there's a specialist there. I'm coming with you. Cousin Delia has plenty of room. No flaws. I need you here. I'm going to tell you something that may sound rather strange, even a little mad, but I assure you it's true. Now, I need you to promise me not to interrupt until I'm finished. Riders ready. Five, four, three, two, one, go! So, I take the letters that you sent to me here from Mr. Corrigan, put them in that compartment, close it, and they... And you must promise to send his letters to me, care of Cousin Delia. In Boston.
Is he going to be okay? The EEG does indicate some brain swelling, but fortunately his vital signs are stable. When will he come out of this? Right now it's just impossible to know. Elizabeth Whitcomb to see Dr. Reed. Please take a seat, Miss Whitcomb. Thank you. have an examination room for you shortly, Miss Wickham. Colonel Danby. Till Friday, Colonel. You seemed uh, in a hurry. Yes. Well, don't let me keep you. Might I uh, accompany you, Miss Whitcomb? Well, I, I wouldn't want to interfere with your plans. No, you're not. Uh, I have not. I, I mean, uh... where is your destination? Actually, I'm not quite sure. Perhaps you'd uh, allow me to buy you a cup of tea and we can decide where we're going. <laughs> All right. Have you long been a patient of Dr. Reese? No, this was my first visit. Do you, are you at uh, present, forgive me, feeling poorly? No, at present I feel quite well. Forgive my boldness. May I ask you a strange question? Yes. How is it that I have the total conviction that I know you? I don't know. I feel the same. My dearest Scotty, this afternoon, I met a gentleman named Caleb Denby, presently a colonel commanding the 19th Massachusetts. Scotty, the moment I saw him, I was powerfully drawn to him. And he, it appears, seems to feel an attraction as well. Please do not fear, my darling, that I am in any way moving away from you. For I feel, strange as it may seem, that being with Caleb brings me closer to you. I have the uncanny feeling that what is happening was meant to happen. You promise to read to me. Oh, no, please. Please. Ah, oh, all right, let me see. No laughing. Stranger, 
Not on this earth shall we meet, though surely I have lived a life dreamed of. If I would wed eternity to touch you. Flossie assures me that my letters to you continue to miraculously vanish from the secret compartment. So I pray that you are still connected to me, reading this by one of your electrical lights and understanding. Gracious ladies and fine gentlemen, thank you for coming. Allow me to introduce the guest speaker who will tell you what your attendance and your generous contributions mean to the wounded soldiers of our great state. This brave officer was grievously injured at Chancellorsville, but he is returning to his regiment this very week. Let's all give a warm welcome to Colonel Caleb Denby, of the 19th Massachusetts Infantry. You didn't tell me you were coming here tonight. I thought it'd surprise you. <laughs> well, you have. You're not seriously going back, are you? I have to. How long do we have? I leave day after tomorrow. Lizzie, I need to see you alone. Will you meet me tonight on the common? I can't. My cousin Delia. What? She's practically asleep now. Organized it for you. Right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So, um, maybe you should go up and lie down. No, I'm fine. I'm fine, I'm fine, Lucy. I'm fine. I'm nimble. Mm -hmm. Well, Lucy. Are you all right? I'm all right. I'm okay. I'm canceling my I'm meeting. I'm fine, Deborah. I'm fine. Just a little dizzy. The doctor said that's normal. Normal dizziness, okay? All right? My mother's coming over. She'll cook Italian. I have to get back to living sooner or later, right? Okay. Promise she'll call me if I you... promise. Right. Scott, when you... when you woke up in the hospital, you... Yeah? Nothing. I'm just, I'm glad you're back. Me too. I am 
powerfully drawn to him, and he, it appears, seems to feel an attraction as well. Very soon he will be returning to his regiment. He says there are rumors of a decisive battle somewhere in southern Pennsylvania. Darling, I am so frightened. Southern Pennsylvania. Southern Pennsylvania, 1863, Southern Pennsylvania. Gettysburg. Dearest Lizzie, do not let Colonel Denby return to his regiment. Where are you going? Post office. You just got out of the hospital. Scotty, you cannot drive it's there. Okay. All right, I'll drive. <laughs> Behind the barricade there, sir. Just a second, officer. I need to get in there. No, Just behind the... Please, sir. Please, behind the barricade. You can't go in there. Stay here. I'm just going to go no. in there, sir. Stay. Wait here. No.
Are you sure, Flossie? I checked each day. And my letters to him? They vanished. Just as you said. He promised. Lizzie, dear. Mr. Regal has just arrived to welcome you home. Oh, no, Mother. I, I, I can't just now. Your father's told him you'll be right down. Just freshen up a bit, dear. I'm sure seeing him will lift your spirits. Well, I do believe with General Grant firmly in charge now, then the Western campaign will be going much... Uh... I anticipate a speedy and comprehensive victory. Oh, I, I hope you are right, sir. Welcome back, Miss Whitcomb. You were missed by all. Thank you, Mr. Regal. I hope you will forgive me, but I'm rather fatigued. It was a long journey, and I'd like to postpone this visit. Lizzie? I've asked Mr. Regal to join us at dinner. Maggie? Is there something for me? Yes, Mum. Only this. Lizzie, can you not be more considerate of our guests? In a moment, Father. Lizzie, what is it? Get my bag, Flossie. Hurry! Father, I have to go to the station right away. But you just this minute come from the station. What was in that letter? Mr. Regal, would you give me a ride in your shay, please? Dear lady, I, I would do anything to please you, but against the wishes of your father. Then I shall walk. I forbid it. I'm not a child, father. You can't stop me. This is what comes of letting her go to Boston unattended. Warren. Bossy? What did she tell you? Lizzie! Lizzie! Ma'am, is Harrisburg. Uh, if the Rebs ain't cut the line yet, you'll have to take a carriage from there. Thank you. Yeses. People wrote back already, huh? The wedding's four weeks away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, you lost a month. I know, I know. Sorry. Honey, if you think that we should postpone this, maybe it would be difficult, but we could do it. No, you know? I don't want to do that. Hi. Hi. Oh, hold on. Hello. Any word? Um, no. Not yet. Yeah, I was wondering that too. Listen, uh, Deborah's here. Uh oh, sorry. Well, send her my love and call me if you hear anything, okay? Okay. Bye bye. Oh, that was Mom. She sends her love. What, what was that all about? Oh, uh, she's just worried about me. <sighs> that makes two of us. Well, I'm fine. Why is that so difficult to believe? Sorry. Okay, what do we got here? I'm just, um, 
Go under the second stack. All right. Come on, Lizzie. Starts at dawn. Driver. Come on. Will you take me to Gettysburg? Gettysburg? The heaviest fight in the war is going on up there. Please, will you take me? I have to get there tonight. I'll, I'll, I'll pay you anything that you like. It ain't the money, ma'am. Fine, I'll find someone else. Driver, could you please take me to Gettysburg? All right, ma'am. I'll take you to Gettysburg. Thank you, sir. ma'am. The Rebs done them. Got them good. What's left is over there. Right here. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
I promise to marry you. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Say something. Tell me. What? What, honey? Like on the river, say something. Stranger. Not on this river. Stranger. Not on this earth shall we meet. Though I have surely lived with you, dreamed of you, I would wed eternity to touch you. Not in this world of sighs, but falling forward. Elizabeth. Not, not now, received your warning, but it was too late. Oh, my darling, my colonel is gone, and with him went that part of you I never thought to hold. So write to me, for you are all of him that remains. I'm so sorry. I know you don't want to hear this, but it's for the best. Mother, Caleb is dead. Lizzie's heart is broken. I can't even reach her. An incredible miracle happened, Scotty. And you'll never forget it. But it's over. It's time for you to be in the present with the woman you're about to marry. You do still want to marry her, don't you? Hi. Hi. Are you all right? We need to talk. What is it? Read these.
Dear Lizzie, please do not stop writing your poetry. First you once said we were doomed never to touch each other, but you did touch me with your words. Keep singing, my love. I'll always be here to listen. What are these? Elizabeth Whitcomb wrote them. She's, uh, been writing to me. <clears throat> Her letters just appear in the desk, and then, uh, I write back to her. What you're telling me. What you're telling me is crazy. It's insane. What, 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 what is this? What are you doing? I'm trying to show. I'm trying to tell you. Tell me what? I fell in love with her. Elizabeth Whitcomb? I know it, uh, it sounds... Uh... You know, I don't know what that accident did to you. This is really frightening and... Deb. Dearest, Caleb is dead, and so, my future love, are you. It must be so, for you were one and the same. I know that now. But almost as if from the grave, you have returned to me something I thought I had lost. My voice. Although you may never hear it, I am enclosing this song for you. Can this be? I don't know, but it's true. This isn't happening. This is not possible. No. It is happening. It is happening. I don't understand it. I'm sorry I dragged you through it, but it's real. But it is real. The love I felt for this woman, that I feel for her, is real. Deserve to be loved completely. I'm not even gonna 
try to understand what's happening here. But I know this. If you don't feel that way about me, we shouldn't be together. I will never forget how the winds of time blew back and forth for me. I will never forget how my heart lit up like a glowing Christmas tree. Though I wander in hell or heaven, my slate wiped clean by death, you, my love, my dream of love, I'll never, ever forget. So what will you do now? Well, she left me the house, so I'll stay a while and see how it feels. Would you mind? Could I take one last look at her room? Suit yourself. Thanks. so much. You all right, mister? Yes, ma'am. Clarice wanted you to have this. She found it in the attic when she was a little girl. It's a batch of letters, diaries, papers, and poems, lots of poems. It's funny. Clarice could swear there were no poems in it when she was a kid. <laughs> of course, she was getting pretty forgetful there at the end. <laughs> Miss Whitcomb, you were my favorite teacher at Willoughby School for Girls. She became a teacher, that's great. Miss, Miss, Miss Whitcomb, Miss Whitcomb. I guess she didn't marry his regal highness after all. Who? Nothing, it's not important.
così. Try to explain it, but you're never gonna believe it. All right. It's okay. So sorry. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Woo! You must really like you. You guys need to jump on people. Something wrong? Oh. Uh, no. No, nothing. Sorry. It's, it's all right. He's all right. Well, again, sorry. Didn't mean to intrude. Okay. Come on over. Go. Good boy. Excuse me. Uh, sorry. Do you, do you know where I could get a good cup of coffee? Or... <laughs> yeah. I know a really good place, actually. It's like three blocks from here. Could you show me? Could I buy you a couple of No, coffee? no, that's all right. I mean, really, it's the least we can do. All right, you talk me into it. Thank you. 